Hey lovelies, it's Alexa with Blue Woods Design. Today's video is a part of our favorites mixed media YouTube hop art journaling edition. And look at all of these amazing sponsors. What does that mean? Lots of prizes for you guys to win. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to each video. You have a whole week to do so. So enjoy some amazing art journal videos. Here's today's project that I'll be doing and some of my favorites that I'll be using on the page. To start my page, I am covering it with gesso just to get a nice even surface and one that won't absorb if I use any sprays, that sort of thing. My first favorite product that I'm using is this Color Shift paint. Oh my goodness, you guys. If you haven't tried it, you need to. It is so good. Check out the iridescent quality, like when you use the light to hit it just right. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. Um, one of the things that I hear a lot is breaking that blank page. What do you do when you're staring at a white page and you don't know what to do? I like to just start laying paint down. I'm using my fingers, but you could also use a brush. <laughs> no need to get all messy. I like to get messy. So I started by just finger painting some paint on. This is Liquitex Heavy Body, so I can scrape into it using a palette knife or the end of my paintbrush, and that's another technique I really love because suddenly it takes just putting paint down into already the mark-making kind of portion of your page. Here I'm using a spray bottle cap and just putting some circles onto the page. Already the inspiration is starting to hit. I don't have a white page. I'm not wondering where I'm going. I'm just having fun. What I'm doing here is I am using a piece of paper to kind of, I do dry my pages, but I also am impatient. So I just press a piece of paper onto it and anything that's still sort of wet um, goes onto my paper. And I actually end up with the start of another page, um, some good collage papers, whatnot. I am using a Woody Stabilo right here and just doing, again, more mark making, not sinking, just playing. So today I'm creating one of my crazy backgrounds for you guys. I know a lot of people have asked me before about my crazy colored backgrounds and how to do it and kind of the method to the madness. Well, <laughs> I wish I could say there was a lot of it, but there's not a ton of method. It's really just playing. I do like to dry layers in between so that I'm not just making mud but I do just play. I grab some of my favorite things, like here I'm grabbing some Marabou art sprays and spraying around the page. Um, you also saw me do some scribble writing in there, another favorite of mine. I think having script in the background, and really, you can just scribble scrabble. It doesn't need to say anything. You don't need to overthink it. Again, this layer is just playing. And I think that's one of the best ways to get started in your art journal. It's a place that you don't need to worry about perfection. Um, I will say, <laughs> this layer starts to look a little funky to me and I don't love it, <laughs> but I get to a place where I really do love it. So again, first layers, don't worry so much, don't overthink it, just play. This page was definitely needing something and I think it was pink. I tried with the pink spray but it really didn't give me the impact I wanted so I grabbed my pink craft paint and started to add some hot pink. Another thing I really love to do is create faces. So while I'm watching TV at night I'm often sketching faces on little pieces of paper like this so I always have faces at the ready but for today's project I'm going to create one with you and I'm going to walk you through how I do it. Um, I'm going to start by making my oval shaped face. That will change as I get going but I always start with an oval. Do my line down the center and then my line straight across the middle. Then you're going to divide each section in half. So from the middle line to the bottom, divide that in half. Then from that line to the bottom, divide it in half again. What I'm doing here is I'm actually lowering my eye line a little bit. So while that was technically at the midline, I like to lower mine. Now that's a stylistic choice I've made just from having made a lot of faces. It's kind of up to you if you want to start with the more traditional. I don't make traditional faces. Mine are super whimsical for sure. 
So now, as you can see, drawing in my eyes and kind of whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm kind of trying to mirror that on the other side. I'm not worrying too much about perfection at this point. For the nose, we just do that little swoop. And again, my nose I do a little bit lower as well. Um, and then my mouth. One of the keys is I like to mirror the nose, that little loop for the bottom of the nose I do for the top of the mouth. And that just kind of gives you a uniform look. Again, please remember when you are making faces that everything is changeable. Erasing is part of the process. Do not think any of us just sit down and draw a face without ever erasing. Um, there is a lot of erasing that goes on. So it's fine tuning the shape of things. As you can see, I'm trying to get her face exactly how I wanted. Um, I wanted her to have some sort of cheekbones and little hints of an ear there. And now I'm trying to decide what am I gonna do with her hair? That's always kind of my <laughs> point where I wonder, which way am I going with this? Because sometimes I just love the face without the hair. But today I am adding some hair for her. And I'm just doing a simple hairdo, <laughs> just straight down. And as you'll see, now that I've drawn my face with my pencil, I'm now gonna actually go over it with one of my absolute favorite tools in my art collection and that's a Stabilo all pencil. I swear I go through these so fast. <laughs> they are always looking like little nubs in my um, videos because I'm always like at the end of one about to order a new one. So I'm just going over all my lines that I'm sure of. Um, any of those that were more sketchy lines I'll kind of wait on those and get to those later. The great thing about a Stabilo All Pencil is that you can activate it with water. So one of the best parts about it is I do a lot of my shading by simply dipping my brush into water and then into some of those dark lines of the Stabilo and grabbing a little bit of that black and I start my shading that way. So I always kind of start with my eyes because that I want to keep dark so it's okay to like deal with the dark stabilo. <laughs> I won't all of a sudden have a big black splotch on her face. So I'm doing all of her eyelashes and then as you'll see, shading that upper lip. The upper lip is usually pretty dark. Um, and now I'm starting to use that like residual stabilo. So whatever's sort of left on my stabilo, I'm creating her pupils with and I'm gonna start to create some shading with. Um, here you can see with her nose, I'm kind of just going over the lines, creating a little shadow underneath, shadow by the cheeks and the eyes. Basically, she's getting like kind of straight on at this point. Um, so she's got a little shadow on each side. And as you'll see, that starts to change once I sort of fine tune where everything goes. One of the great things about the Stabilo pencil is that it really um, reactivates with water really well, almost like a watercolor. So you can see I kind of push some of that shadow back a little bit by just getting a wet brush and sort of pushing the black back into my line. Um, again, just doing simple shading. If there are questions about shading, definitely throw them below. I would be more than happy to answer. Um, kind of giving her a general shading feel at this point. I think I do end up actually shading one side a little bit more so that like it would be like the light was coming from one side versus the other. Um, yeah, so it looks like I'm starting to shade the left side of her face, keeping the right side as though it was more in the light. Um, but again, all of this is done just using those Stabilo lines that I drew in. So really what you're worrying about is your sketching. So once you get your sketching down, the shading part comes pretty easily if you just use a Stabilo and some water. You don't need to worry about all of the tones and textures and things like that. Obviously, if you're wanting color in the face, that would be a different story. Um, but I think using your Stabilo and just some water and a paintbrush is a really great way to start with working on faces. It takes one of the things out of the equation. Here you'll see, I'm trying to decide, am I going to keep her square or am I gonna actually cut her out? 
<laughs> um, I think because of the size, I want to cut her out, but I did want to grab that color shift paint again and give her some like pretty translucent blue eyes. I just thought it would look so cool. And now I'm going back and fussing with my background. <laughs> so before I cut it out and put her down, I really wanted to fine tune things and cover up spots I didn't like and add colors I felt like were missing. And you'll see I come back and do that again and again. <laughs> so it's always a dance between just playing and then starting to look at it with a discerning eye and um, fine tuning in a different way. So more so balancing out your colors that you might be missing on one spot um, or mark making where you feel like you could use some darker colors, things like that. Another favorite tool for really probably most art journalers is, of course, a stencil. This one is a Sean Petit stencil and it's her mark making stencil. I really love it because it's super quick, gives you those marks that you want to make um, without having to do each individual one. The other thing I love to do is add black. So once I've got all this color down, adding black and white can be definitely a unifier and a neutralizer. So um, while it definitely adds interest to the piece, it also actually kind of unifies it and kind of subdues that background a little bit. So now I'm gonna worry about where am I putting my girl and I'm just gonna glue her down right here. So as you can see, I will start to fuss with her a little bit and add some more color. Here you'll see I'm using Spectrafix to make sure that that stabilo doesn't move around as I'm, you know, playing on top of things and <laughs> messing with it. I didn't want it to move around. Spectrafix is a great one, doesn't have a smell, that kind of thing. Now I'm just grabbing some white and I think I'll end up grabbing my gold as well and making some marks just playing again. This paint pen that I'm using is actually called Deco Color Premium Paint Pen in gold. I love this one. It is super shiny and it is just super pretty. Best gold paint pen I've ever found. <laughs> Another favorite of mine is the Marabou Art Crayons. I like to use them to finish off my pages by doing my edges in the black. And again, if I feel kind of at a stopping point, it's a great spot to keep moving. So I know I'm gonna wanna edge it out in black. So I just start doing that while I'm thinking of my next move. Here again, you can see I am adding some pink. And again, this is where I'm starting to think about my balance. Um, so while before it was playtime, now I'm adding more pink where I need it. I'm also covering up those little white scallops that I did, because I didn't love them. But I kind of like how they're showing through from behind the pink. And of course, another favorite, which is the Tim Holtz ideology and Big Talk, all those stickers that they have. So you can find a sent sentiment or create your own. This one says, trust your imagination, create a beautiful reality. And with the addition of this little heart, my friends, I am done. 
This page has so much of my favorite stuff, not just favorite products, but also my favorite techniques at the moment. I love, love, love creating these crazy, chaotic, playful, fun backgrounds full of bright colors and mark making, and then creating black and white faces on top, um, fine tuning that skill of drawing faces and keeping that black and white on top of this crazy background. I just love the juxtaposition. Hopefully you guys learned either some fun tips today or maybe some cool products. Here they are again, things that I love to use in my art journal. And I hope you enjoy all the fun stuff coming at this hop. And we'll see you soon with all of our winners. Have a good one, guys.